Welcome to our podcast, Doing It Right. This podcast reveals authentic stories from successful leaders doing it right. It's about their journey to become a leader, their choices, motivations, and lessons. In essence, how they built successful personal brands. Your host is Valerie Sokolowski, author of eight leadership books and nationally known as an authority on executive presence and personal branding. Let's get started. Here's Valerie. All right, welcome to the show, and we've got another incredible one, so stay tuned. But I just want to start by saying you know what my work is about. It's inspiring leaders to stay authentic, to show up as they are real, right? And when you are the leader you're born to be, you're going to light up the world. So I would just ask you this question. What do you think is your presence? Everybody's talking about presence. Well, what is it? Really, it's very simple. It's just your ability to inspire confidence. And so that's the whole package, and that's what our work is about. So if you're interested in exuding a greater executive presence, you give me a call, will you? Okay, so here's what I want to say today about our show. We are going to have a celebration of something very special. It's a goal that my guest has achieved that's going to encourage you. Anybody that reaches a goal, we want to hear about how they did it, right? And I'm sure there's ups and downs with all of ours, certainly mine, before we get to that epitome. So here's a quiz for you to figure out who the guest is. You know him as a character, <laughs> and in real life, he really is. You know him if you watched television as a child and remember a character in a 50-pound purple suit. You know him now as the host of a wonderful podcast celebrating the 100th episode called Purple Roads. Da -da 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 -da. Carrie Stinson. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should jump or well, do you should. something. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> oh, Carrie, look at this. I had to have a cake for you. I love it. A few balloons because football catch. Yep. You reached your goal. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your support. You know what? It, being a podcaster is not easy, is it? No. Nope. No, it's not. And and so uh, we talk a lot about this through the through the years. How did you start the podcast from being Barney? Tell us how that all started. Yeah, you know, it's a funny story because I didn't tell anyone that I was Barney. Um, something I'm very proud of, very proud of, but just not something that I talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. And I got asked to be on a podcast about three years ago, four years ago, uh, about my photography. And the gentleman said, can I talk about what you did before photography? And I said, well, I was I was Barney and I explained the story and he goes, No, you weren't. <laughs> okay, I was. And so he went online, obviously, while well, I'm sitting right there and like, oh my God, can we talk about that? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the podcast now became mostly about Barney and very little about the photography. But at the end of this show, when I was telling these stories, uh, those two gentlemen um, both started tearing up mm. from hearing these stories of Barney going to hospitals and helping kids. And I just kind of realized that the story needed to come out. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start a, a podcast called Purple Tales. That was my first one, um, where we just had Barney people come on the show and tell these amazing stories. Kind of a behind the scenes that I grew up with, the stories that people needed to hear. Sure. So I loved that so much, and we did 26 episodes, and then I thought, I want to go bigger. I like to go big. So um, I created Purple Roads which is people from all over the children's universe. Because I knew they had stories similar to mine, right? They'd gone to these hospitals. Everyone that's ever been on the show didn't start out in children's entertainment, but fell in love with children's entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to talk about it. And I've had Mickey Mouse and Big Bird and the Wiggles and you <laughs> name it exciting. all over the show. And it's just been it's such a blast for me. And they are all incredible. Audience, you, you have to tune in to Purple Roads, especially now the 100th podcast. Why yeah. don't you tell us about this 100th? That's a big deal. It is. And, and I'm not mentioning the guests because okay. it's just about to come out. But it is. It's really exciting. It's someone that I worked with for a long time. 
and just the nicest person. I've wanted to have him on the show for a long time. And we kind of go back to what I really wanted, which was just to, you're almost eavesdropping <laughs> into <in, to laughs> what it was like for us. Uh -huh. And uh, and so we get to see what he's doing uh, these days. And it's really such a cool show hmm. um, to have someone on that, that um, he kind of started with me. So it's a really cool thing. You know, I hadn't thought about that, Carrie. It is like eavesdropping because every episode, and they're all fascinating to hear, um, to hear, like someone like you that was in the purple suit, which right. I want you to tell me about in a minute, sure. us about. But I mean, yes, you ask them questions so that they are, you feel like, oh, I watched that or I heard that. And oh, well, that's interesting. And was that what was going on behind the stage, right? Yeah. So tell us about you being in that purple suit and how you got to be Barney. Well, I've told the story many times, but in the short of it, I was a musician. Um, my dad, I was 23 years old, said, you need to get a job. Uh, we just moved back to Dallas, Texas. And of course, we didn't have we didn't have the internet and all that stuff. So I went in the newspaper and uh, I got a job at Chili's uh, in Plano, Texas. Mm -hmm. And the only thing they had was a busboy. And they said, if you'll be a busboy um, and you do this for a month, we'll make you a server. I said, okay. As I was told to get a job, so I got a job, oh, sure. right? That's what you do. So I got the job. The guy that was uh, working with me said, can you work Saturday morning for me because I have to be Barney. All right. Did you even know who Barney was? No one didn't. It was only in Dallas, Fort Worth. There was no TV show. There was a couple videos, but that was it. Okay. So the short of that story is that I ended up meeting her. Um, he was going off to college, so I went and met her. Um, and I know that's something we talk a lot about. I was told, basically I was told no, cause she said, I'll call you. And she never did. So I called her back <laughs> and I worked my way into the job. I, uh, um, was told that they'd already hired someone else and that she might add a second person in a couple months, but would you, uh, he asked for a couple, uh, weekends off. Would you do that? And I just jumped in, learned it took the job, took his job, and never looked back. Never looked back for yeah. 22, 22 years, years you were Barney. 22 years. So uh, credentials, I mean, he said here, take over. But what did you have to be or do? Or how did you have to, let's talk about presence. Yeah. How did you show up to yeah. be Barney? Well, I watched the videos, so I understood the character enough. And a lot of it really was reacting with the kids. Oh, sure. Right? I learned very quickly he was their friend. Mm -hmm. Right? He was someone they wanted to have fun with, someone they wanted to play with. And so that's really what I did. You know, I learned to use that costume and so to have fun by wiggling my tail or doing a little, you know. <laughs> I, before we started today, I was I was dancing out there with with Jeff Crelly, and he's laughing. I mean, I can you can still make people laugh, right? And sure. have fun. Uh -huh. So that's what I basically did is just learn that. But obviously, with the "I Love You" song, I learned that part too, mm -hmm. right? So can you, you know, still sing it? Fun, and happy, and well, I don't really do the voice, but yeah, I, you know, I love you, you love me, we are a happy family. I saw that. Uh, is <laughs> oh gosh but yeah it's Memories. pretty special yeah there's something about that show that was just um ethereal it was just it's classic it will well it's always... what you said in your opening it's authentic it's authentic it's absolutely when we say we love you we love you mm -hmm. okay and so when barney would say you are special because he believes you're special and you, you are special and you really did inside that absolutely scene. yeah and, but everyone else, and it's really important. I really try to get this message across. So did the camera operator and mm -hmm. the director and makeup and on and on and on. Uh, we have a lot of the Bernie kids on the podcast mm -hmm. um, that are now adults. Mm -hmm. And they talk about that. Oh, my gosh, the teacher was so great. And the guy that did my hair, he was so nice. And they cared so much. A culture. Yeah, they remember Built that 15 culture. years later. Of course. So that's really important. We all believed. We saw the power. We saw what it was sure, doing. Sure. And so, yes, it was a job. Yes, we made money. But that was not our motivating factor. Mm-mm. 
Well, now I know that people ask you probably the same questions, Carrie, over and over again. So, and I'm sure you've answered them on Purple Roads, but uh -huh. let's get it out of the way. Sure. What do they ask? What do you tell them? Let's get those basic ones going. You know, it's funny because they always ask, was it hot? They always want to know about the costume, obviously. Was it hot in there and was it heavy? And yes and yes. Um, 50 pounds heavy? 50 pounds. The, the original one was 70. So it got a little bit, a little bit lighter. But I was a, a cross country runner, so I was in phenomenal shape. Mm -hmm. And you really just focus on what you're doing. It's so important in children's entertainment. You disappear, right? Mm -hmm. What you're focusing on as the kids, right? They didn't come to see Carrie; they came to see Barney. That's a good. So point. that's what you focus on. So. Yes, it was hot. Yes, it was heavy. But I didn't really notice those things because you're just locked into what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? You have a single moment with this child and usually with their parents. And so you just focus on yeah. on that. You know, the last thing you want is I came to see Barney and it wasn't Barney, right? He, he didn't jump or he didn't, he didn't do all those things. And everyone in this industry that comes on Purple Roads will tell you the same story. I've seen it. Really? I've worked with Big Bird. It's incredible. Carol Spinney, the original, was incredible. He had to have been, when I worked with him, probably in his 70s. And I mean, I smiled. Oh. Mr. McFeely, uh -huh. David Newell, same thing. He was in probably his 60s when I met him as an adult. Uh -huh. And he said, speedy delivery. And I just <laughs> like, no. I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. So they all do it. And it's why I love this industry so much. Oh, my goodness. That's why Purple Roads is such an incredible podcast carrie so fast forward to 100th yes anniversary just what do you want to say about that this is a big deal it, it's um you know it's funny and you probably can say this about yours as well that it i got way more out of it than i realized it's true you know mm -hmm. the people make me this i learn something every week I'm usually smiling from something. I get inspired every week from someone mm -hmm. that maybe I didn't expect. Someone I just wanted to talk to, and I didn't realize that. Um, for anyone that's doing podcasts, it's just part of my life. You just don't accept no. I've had many guests that said no, yeah. and they came back around and said, oh, my gosh, yes, because I didn't get to the right person or the right email address or the right phone number. Yeah. But they all come back, and they love being on the show. And uh, so, you know, you just don't stop. That's a good teachable point of view. You know, the other one you uh, mentioned to me earlier, and I want to ask about this because you said never, uh, well, you said learn to trust yourself and then listen to people. Yeah. And what's that about? Um, so, you know, I did Barney, as we've talked about, for 22 years. Mm -hmm. And I went out and, and got that job. I went out and got, I listened to my gut. I was told, you know, are you, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, even my, my sweet father, um, he, he said to me, I, I don't know if you should quit Chili's oh. <laughs> for this purple dinosaur. <laughs> he said, you know, you're an adult and you need to make the decisions. And I mean, I can remember this like it happened yesterday, uh -huh. but I don't think that's a good idea. Oh. And then a year later, he came to see me perform at Radio Mu City Music Hall. And we're standing there in the middle, and he goes, well, you were right. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good idea. Right. But even if I would have been wrong, it was my decision. Mm -hmm. So I did that for all those years. And then when I, I left, it was hard. It was really hard. Anyone will tell you. Um, uh, you know, I just saw it last night that Tom Brady retired, mm -hmm. and then he came back. It's that same thing. You, mm. you do something so long and you go, what do I do next? And so there was a point I was a little, I don't want to say lost, but I was i was almost looking for people to kind of tell me where to go and what to do. Mm. And then I realized, well, that's not what got me in the first place. And I went back to where I was from the beginning and started making this decision. I started Purple Roads. And I've gone out and just kind of run this show the way I want to call the guests I want to see. Because mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be interesting to the people that are out there. And so, you know, I still had asked for advice here and there. But it's all in It's all in here. Mm -hmm. It's all in here. And we all have this. That's right. Right? But a lot of times we just don't trust ourselves. I, that is such a big one. But if you 
fail. You didn't really fail, mm-hmm. right? Even if I'd only done five shows, I still did five shows. Yes. And that's what's important. So trusting yourself, it can be difficult, but I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the greatest reward. And it's not easy. No. Uh, <laughs> no. It's like anything else. Being a podcaster is called work. Yeah, W O R K. You don't just show up and no. get on get on a microphone. Let's talk about some of the guests that you've had, Carrie. Yes. What's maybe the um, guest that you learned the most from? Oh my goodness! Good. You know what? It, it would probably be Brad Keston, who I just had on. Um, he was Charlie Brown. He was the voice of Charlie Brown, and. I try to have conversations, mm-hmm. so I do research, but a lot of it I leave to happening right there live. Spontaneous. And I learned so much from this gentleman. He was a, he was a child actor, and um, just a, it was just absolute fascinating what he got, what, he, what jobs he did get, what jobs he didn't get how he handled it all Mm -hmm. then you know deciding not to be an an adult actor he was able to avoid the problems that a lot of child actors have you know drugs and things like that but then he tried to go back to acting and learning about the real world so that stuff to me is is absolutely fascinating the decisions we make Mm -hmm. in life you know, and we look back. Yeah. He was looking back a lot, and he was so open. And we talk about authentic. Uh huh. I, you know, I, I really appreciate him doing <laughs> that. I, it was shocking. That's so funny you mentioned that because inside here Uh-oh. is one more thing. <laughs> I have to pull it out, and it's a mirror. Oh goodness! Because <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want this to be like a rear view mirror. Okay. So as you look back. In your rear view mirror, is there anything that you would have changed or done differently as advice, maybe? And I, you know, I don't think so. Good. Because anything that I, I wish I would have done, I've done in the future. So I've learned from that, if it makes sense, Mm -hmm. right? I wish I would have taken this opportunity. Now I jump at every opportunity, whether I fail or not. So I've just learned from everything that maybe at one point I wished I would have done, Uh I now do. That's a great another lesson learned. Jump at every opportunity. If it fails, so what? Well, right, but but anything that you you wish you would have done differently, Uh you can still fix that Uh in your future decisions. Good point. Right? Uh I can't go back and, and change those. But I'm probably going to run to it again in life at some point, and now I can fix it. Uh, that's wise wisdom. Oh, it took we... a long time yeah, to get that that, that wisdom. I, I, will, I will tell you, I, you know, I remember being 17 and thinking I knew everything, and my dad said to me, "You know, I remember being your age and knowing everything." <laughs> and then I turned 30 and realized I knew nothing. And it, it really is the truth. This <laughs> wisdom has come from learning a lot of life's lessons. That's so true. And your dad was born in Fort Worth. He was. And you have such a fondness for Fort Worth. I love it. So tell us just about your love of Texas and particularly Fort Worth. You know, Worth I was, you I was uh, born in Washington, D.C., moved to Dallas when I was 10, kicking and screaming and fell in love with it. My dad took me and really introduced me to Texas, you know, horses and and going out on the ranches and all of those things. And Fort Worth to me represents all that. It's just it the friendliest people. I get to wear, I got my boots on now. I was wearing my boots and my hat and all that. I got married in Fort Worth, um, cowboy boots and the whole deal. And, and uh, the people are so special in Fort Worth. Um, it's that spirit and it's that authenticity, mm-hmm. you know, well, they, they wear that hat because that's what they wear. Because that's what right? they wear. And that is so you. true. That right. is so true. And and I have to say that I've also just recently talked with a, a man who also came from the East Coast. And he says this about all of Texas. He just loves Texas. There's something about it. I'm sorry, audience, there really is. Come on down. Yep. Well, maybe not. <laughs> we got enough right now. But yes, there is a very special a very special uh, culture, I think, in our fair state. 
So uh, the other thing you shared with me is once you say you're going to do it, do it. Yes. What was that about? Yeah, well, it's really important. You know, we have our word. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. And so you got to be careful, right? If you say you're going to do something, you've, you've got to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging at times. Um, but I, I, you know, like when I said I was going to do Purple Roads, it, it's a lot of work because I, I pretty much did it, a lot of it myself. Mm -hmm. and, and so it took a little bit more time and it's taken a lot of time to build and this and that. And there were some amazing people that helped in the beginning with that. But it's ultimately all on me. Yeah. Right. I start putting myself out there and I'm going to do that, you know, mm -hmm. and obviously I did it with all my years at Barney and I went back to school for photography. And so I put myself out there as well. So tell us about photography. Oh, you are talented. You play the piano, too. Right. I do. I do. Multi-talented Barney. <laughs> well, I, it's really simple in the fact that I try everything. Mm. So. I wanted to be a singer so bad. I took singing classes in college. I'm one of the worst singers you'll ever hear. And I got an A in the class. And my teacher said, if your passion and your voice were the same, you'd be <laughs> the greatest singer in the world. But I don't have to worry about it. I, I tried, that's what I wanted to do. And so photography the same, I went back to school. After Barney, I went back to college found a mentor and just just went in with the mentality that I don't know anything, but I want to know mm -hmm. and and went and learned how to do it. Well, what is it about photography that um, that is that you enjoy so much looking through the lens and well, it's seeing. because of my, my years in Barney. I looked through a costume and so I saw the world differently than everyone else. And then all the years of doing Barney and Friends, because I was on that for, goodness gracious, 12 years, um, I wanted to look on the other side of the camera. And mm -hmm. I wanted people to see what I saw, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, then I went to school and had the greatest mentor in the world who even got me to dial in my eye even a little bit more. And so I like just showing things that I see. I don't create stuff. Mm -hmm. I photograph what I see. So. You know, we talk about the authentic. And yeah, you, it's something you, I walked upon or and, saw. And you do what kind of photography? Kind of describe it. Well, I do. Because you're in galleries. I am in galleries. So that's a lot of Texas work. Mm -hmm. I like to I like to do a lot of fine art Texas work where I shoot things that I see, pictures that I see. Um, and then I do portrait photography and I do concert photography and lifestyle and all that. As photographer, you you start out doing something which was concert photography and then people go can you do portraits and so you do portraits and then you're good at portraits and then can you do with it yeah I can. so there's not much i can't do and uh and i'm very excited i just got hired um on as an instructor at the school that i learned from at colin really? college so uh, continuing education so i'm going to get to help people just the way those teachers helped me which you know, I love the full circle moment. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Life is just good right now, isn't it, Carrie? It's always good. It's always good. <laughs> it's always good. You've got to put yourself in that lens, don't you? Yeah, well, you got to remember, you know, I used to hug people for a living. Well, yes, you know? yes. And, and, and on that very note, yeah. you were hugging people who were really hurting. And I just have to bring up what's happening in our world sure. right now. Because Purple Roads is almost to me, Carrie, a respite. I can tune into your show and I remember things or I'd heard about this show, maybe I didn't even see mm -hmm. it. But it's like that, just an hour of, that was just really nice. You know, and we need shows like that. I'm so tired of the uh, 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 right. and the opinion, opinion, opinion. Well, so and the best thank part, you. you're my pleasure, but it's real. I know it is. That's the part that I love about this. No one makes up anything. Every aspect was real. They really feel that way. I've never gotten off the air and go, that person was a jerk. Never, ever, You ever. wouldn't have them on the show if they were. Yeah, well, yeah, but a lot of people, I don't even, like, when we meet, that's meeting for the first time. Oh. We pop on. It's the first time. And and so a lot of the emotion you're seeing is what you're seeing. We had Joshua Del Cruz, 
who's from Blue's Clues. He's one of the most popular kids performers out there. And he got on, you'll love this, he got on and <laughs> he said, you're kind of a fan of Barney because my studio is all Barney stuff. And I said, well, <laughs> I actually was Barney for 22. He goes, what? Oh. And his agent had obviously not told him. And he had like a fanboy moment right there. And I'm like, are you ready? And so we go and he's like glowing up and all that stuff. So it's a real emotion there. And oh, that's what's cool because I'm a fan of his. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of that that goes on as well, which is fun. So what now is your goal? What's next for Carrie? Oh, goodness. We got a lot of, a lot of things happening. Uh, obviously, we'll just, we'll just keep going with Purple Roads. Um, I really wanted to get involved with charities. And so we have a charity that Purple Roads is now part of. Um, with Stan Tucker, he's my latest guest and just the most amazing man. He has an organization called Leap for Literacy. And basically he wants to make sure that every kid has a book. Mm. And so he originally started what he calls the read and roll, which is a bookmobile. And the kids earn the credits from acts of kindness or from reading and then their teachers log in the hours and they get coins he is now really? going to take that program to nationwide so that the teachers can do that and you can order a book and it'll be actually sent to you and this is in what state it's in georgia right it's in now. georgia right now but it will be national and uh purple roads i can say this here he also has an author program so he has a kit that he gives to kids and they learn how to be an author and they actually write a story and draw the pictures. What age kids, Carrie? Oh my goodness. I, he's got some little ones doing this. So I don't know, really? it might be five to whatever. All the books then go to a committee where they judge who whose book actually gets published. So they publish the book with a professional illustrator and then the kid is given the book He's also given one to put in his school library. And then they sell these books on Amazon with 100% of the profits going to the kid that actually wrote the book. Oh my goodness. And so uh, wow. Purple Road is gonna be a corporate sponsor on one of these books. That's um, probably the most creative it's, it's endeavor it's I've heard It's absolutely brilliant. I found, found him just out looking for guests and he has just been a joy. So Purple Roads is gonna get behind that. We're gonna help him raise some books and raise some money for books and things of that nature. So it's really important to give back. Yes. Right, I love yes. doing Purple Road. I love doing all this stuff, mm -hmm. but we're given this platform where people watch us each week. Mm -hmm. And I just believe we need to do something positive with that. And so Amen. I'm getting together with, with good old Stan Tucker. Well, then he needs to be on this show, doesn't he? Yes, he should. Absolutely. Yes, he should. He I can does. introduce you. All I right. can help you with that. I bet you can. <laughs> you are one of the most um, authentic, obviously, but giving people I know, and you always have time for people. That's another thing I think is important to say to the audience that if any of you have ever had someone say, Oh, I don't want to bother you or well you're always so busy or doesn't that bother you it does me because that's not the truth first of all right, right. <laughs> and secondly don't ever say that to someone because it, it's kind of makes you feel like well what's the, what what are you getting at I mean mm -hmm. did I hurt your feelings or what but there's something important here to say let people know that you're always available maybe not right at the moment but be available to people that's a leadership tip don't you think it is it is i think it's important for people to understand with all of us if you really look back at your life i didn't get here by myself exactly right? i had an unbelievable father mother grandparents i had an amazing teacher in junior high i had my high school coach that was unbelievable mm -hmm. and then now this mentor here i'm talking about photography in my in my 40s so i believe when people give to you that you just got to give back and so that's where this is all coming from i want to be that person that they were for me because it they all changed and all these amazing kids by the way all these mm -hmm. kids over 22 years yeah. they touched my life in ways that you know I don't want to stop giving because they no. gave so much to me. Absolutely. Well, you're giving it back, Carrie. We wish you, I wish I could light those and you could have a piece, but we'll do that later. Oh, we're going to have a piece of that cake. Don't worry about that. 
<laughs> this has been an incredible show. And again, I want to encourage you, audience, to watch Purple Roads. And you can see the banner at the bottom there. And you know what? Comment. There are a lot of comments, by the way, on his podcast, but you comment. Let them know you saw or you learned about the show on my show. That would be nice, too. And let us know who you want to see on our show. That's a good idea. We do that. We do that with the fans. Okay. I'll have to think about that. All right. Thank you. Just thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for the wonderful things you're continuing to do and just for always being. What is one of the songs that gives that message? <laughs> is there a statement from the song? Let's see, uh, what might that be? You are special. There it is. You are special. You are. You are special, Carrie. I well, love you, dear. I love you. you. You're the best. I love being on your show. I love what you're doing. It's just a pleasure as always. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> and I appreciate you so much. And you've got to hit that red button and subscribe. I don't think people realize how important it is to us podcasters yeah. because analytics matter. So please subscribe and share and pass the word, would you? Now, stay tuned. I have a Valerieism, and it actually comes from another photographer, Carrie. I had on the show DeWitt Jones, who another very special man who was the National Geographic photographer for many, many, many years. And he, um, he said this, and I'm going to tag on to it, Valerieism. He said, open your eyes to see and see the most potential in every frame of life. Now, Carrie, can you relate to that? I thought that might be good for you to tag into as a photographer see the most potential in every frame of life. Well, I think that's what photographers do. Mm -hmm. I think we look at life differently, right? I mean, one, one frame, one second, yeah. something miraculous is happening. I mean, you see that all the time. And I think we, unfortunately, get so busy with life that we miss out on so much incredible moments. Mm. Maybe we should all pick up a camera. What you should think? all pick up. You all have one on your phone. Well, we do. <laughs> you all have one on your phone. How about Stop that? Stop and take a picture. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you for that. And until next time, stay authentic. Go out there and be kind to somebody. Hugs still work. Now the masks are somewhat down. Thank goodness we can see those big smiles. You never know what a smile will do for someone today. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. To receive Valerie's voice, free monthly leadership tips, and to learn more about her leadership programs and coaching, visit her website, ValerieAndCompany.com. Next week, we'll be here again to inspire, engage, and equip you with teachable points of view from successful leaders who have been doing it right. Until then, lead authentically.